Welcome back. Now we have finished learning process dynamics. Then we can use the knowledge about the dynamics to design the system. Now we're getting into process control. And the simplest of all is called the proportional control. Before we go into proportional control, let us look at some basic components in the control loop. First, we need to identify a process that we want to control. And that will be the system of our interest. Within the system, we will want to have a sensor transmission combination. And for example, that could be a composition analyzer that gives us the uh, composition of liquid or and then takes in the composition. Input is the composition and it transmits or outputs electrical signal. And that we denote with AT where A stands for analysis and T is transmitter. And then it usually has a symbol of AT circle. Then we will have a feedback control. And feedback controller usually we denote with AC, where A is analysis and C is controller. And the feedback controller will take the electro signal from the composition analyzer transmitter and then calculate appropriate output electrical signal. So it takes in AT electrical signal and output its own electrical signal that will be calculated. How does it calculate it? Will be the interest of this and other uh, video recordings. And in this video, we will explore proportional. Control. We'll also have current to pressure transducers that we will denote as I over where I is the current and P is the pressure. It converts an electrical signal to a pneumatic signal, where the pneumatic signal is air. And then finally, we have a final control element where we can adjust the manipulated variable. Commonly, it could be a control valve that we denote with the valve. And then at the top, we have a, this thing call it a control valve. Now it takes in electrical or pneumatic signal and changes the flow rate. Finally, we also have transmission line that connects between each instrument. Maybe we have transmitter that goes into a line and then it feeds signal to the controller AC and then know that the AC gives in, takes in the electrical signal and outputs also an electrical. And it gives to IP transducer and now it becomes an air signal. Finally, it can feed into a control valve, control the flow rate. Now we want to distinct, distinguish the electrical signal transduced by electrical uh, cables. That is, we use dash lines for electrical signals. And for pneumatic tubing, we use this symbol. So for the electrical ones, we want to change how we write it. So we have dash lines. And then for pneumatic or the air signal, we will have double dash on the solid line. Proportional controller is one of the simplest controller, and it has the objective of keeping the measured deviation from the set point equal to zero. And we call that deviation the error. The error signal can be expressed as E of t, the set point y s p of t and measured variable ym of t. Usually, the set point does not have to be a function of time. It does not have to be a function of time because we have a fixed set point. But sometimes set point can change in response to time if we want, for example, change the 
either its temperature set point, then it will be a function of time. And mathematically, we can express the error signal as E equals to Y of SP minus Y of M. But note that the error signal is not the same as deviation variable. That E of T is, does not necessarily have to be Y prime of T. Because if we look at the definition of deviation variable, it is equal to the measured value, which in this case equal to y of m minus y bar. And y bar is the nominal steady state value. But note that in the error signal we have set point. And set point does not necessarily has to uh, be the same as the steady state value. Set point is a constant most of the time, but sometimes it can depend on time. But the steady state value is as good, t goes to infinity, but the set point is preset thus, and therefore calling it a set point. So for example, if I have a graph that I have a response like this, Say this is y1, t, and y1 is the steady state value. Because as t goes to infinity, y is equal to. But maybe we don't want that to be our set point, and we're just setting our set point here, and the response haven't reached the set point yet. But it does not necessarily have to be the same. And so that as t goes to infinity, this part will be error error at t1, and this is error at t time t. Now we can define proportional control is equal to t of t equals to p bar plus kc p of t, where p of t is the controller output. And notice that the controller output is usually an electrical signal. So it could be a voltage or a ampage that is current. And P bar is the steady state value. And sometimes called bias. K of C is the controller gain. And E of T is the error signal. And if we draw a graph of the E of T, which is the electrical signal output with respect to T, then it is a linear curve. And where we have T equals to zero, we have Well, now the variable is not t, the variable is e of t. We have that e to be the x here. Then I have when e of t equals to 0, then this term cancels out. And we have e of t equals to e bar, which is the steady state value. So I have some comments to make on bias. Why is it the steady state value? So as we see in the graph, when the error is zero, as we have no error and there is spot on on steady state, this time steady. Then we have p of t just equals to p bar. The p bar is the steady state, and we will determine the bias usually. By a process called manual reset, determined by manual. And then for the controller gain, 
we want to look at its sign and look at its value. Its sign could be positive or negative. And we will illustrate with an example next. And the value can be higher the value is, the more sensitive to the error because it is multiplied by the error. So the slope of the line will change. Now we have been looking at the ideal proportional controller. However, realistically, if the error signal goes to infinity, then the output of the controller will also go to infinity. But that is not realistic because it will often be bounded by some physical limit. So now if we redraw a real, more realistic proportional controller, then the proportional controller still at e equals to zero, e equals to zero we have a steady state value p bar. But they will have an upper bound, call it p max, for the controller output. And at that p max, we say it is saturated. And we will also have a lower bound for the minimum, which can also be saturated because of physical limits. Now let us demonstrate that the controller gain could be positive or negative. So let's discuss the sign of the controller gain. First, Let's imagine a situation where we have flow into a tank. And we want to keep the flow rate to the tank at constant W and at a set point of WSP. Maybe we have a flow transmitter to monitor the flow rate. And then it sends electrical signal to a flow controller, FC. And then it gives its electrical signal to a control valve. As a poorly drawn control valve, but okay. If we increase the flow rate, so we have a delta W that is greater than zero, that is, we have W increase. Then we have W equals to. Assume we are initially at a set point, W set point plus W. Okay, so if we have a proportional controller of the FC, then we will have the equation P of T equals to steady state value or bias plus AC, the controller gain, times the error signal. Let's first look at the error signal, P e of t. The error signal is defined as the set point value minus the measured value. And we have the measured value, which we already calculated here. So we have minus set point value plus delta w. So the error signal is negative delta w, which is smaller than zero because delta w we defined it is greater than zero. This is smaller than zero. And then what about P e of T? Because we increase, initially we have an increased disturbance of flow rate to the tank, and we want to maintain the tank at constant set point. And because we have increased flow rate here, we want to decrease the valve opening in order to decrease the flow rate to the tank. And by decreasing the opening, we are decreasing the signal P. So the delta P is decreased. And to say it more clearly, it should be P is decreased. And then where delta P is smaller than zero, we want P to decrease. And in order to let p decrease, the steady state value is a constant, so it does not change. And to decrease p, we need this whole term also decrease. And since e of t is smaller than 0, then we can let kc is greater than 0, and we can achieve 
e of t also decreases. So we have shown that controller gain can be positive in this specific situation. Let's look at another example where the controller gain could be negative. So let's look at two streams now. One stream is a solution with composition x. And we have another stream that is pure water all flowing into a tank. And we want to maintain a constant composition in the tank where the x is at a set point. And then we will have a uh, analyzer transmitter that will be analyzing the composition of the solution. And it will send electrical signal to analyzer controller takes in its electrical signal, and then we will have a flow valve on, on the water stream instead of the solution stream. So if we have disturbances for solution concentration, delta x, for example, greater than zero, so we have x increasing, then we can use the water stream to dilute the concentration in order to maintain a constant set point. So now if we have a delta x here, we can define x is now equal to initially at set point plus the delta x. And if we have a proportional controller at the analyzer controller, we have p of t equals to p bar the steady state value or bias plus the controller gain times the error signal. And again, the error signal is defined as the steady state value, uh, set point value, not steady state value, minus the measured value. And we plug in the measured value, which we already defined here, which is x set point plus x. And things cancel out, we have minus delta x, which is smaller than zero because delta x, we define it as. So E of T is smaller than C. Because the composition increases and we want to keep the composition of the inlet increases and we want to keep the tank con composition constant, we want to dilute with water. And to dilute it, we want to increase the water flow rate. So we want to increase the valve opening and therefore we want to increase signal sent which is delta p and therefore it gives us that which also means delta p is greater than zero so we want p to increase because p bar is a steady state value is a constant cannot change so to increase p we need to increase this big term and because e of t is smaller than zero, and to increase it, we have to let k of c smaller than zero, which means that it should be negative. And now we have shown that the controller gain could be positive in some situation and could be negative. Now let us use our previous knowledge to write the transfer function for the proportional controller. So we have the definition here of proportional controller in the original space. And we want to write it in terms of deviation space. We have to notice that the error function is already in deviation because it deviates from the set point. And so the deviation P of T p prime of t would be equal to the measured value of p which is p of t minus the nominal steady state value and when we plug that in we have p bar plus kc e of t minus p bar and therefore p bars cancel out we have kc d of t and now, e prime is a deviation variable 
and e is also a deviation variable. Now we have the deviation space equation, and to find the Laplace transform, uh, find the transfer function, we will take the Laplace transform and the deviation space for both sides. So on the left we have big pre p prime of s is equal to k of c is a constant and a Laplace transform of the error signal, big E of s. And to rearrange in the form of output divided by input in the Laplace space, and therefore we have the transfer function. We have big P of s, which is the output divided by the input error function, uh, error signal, equal to k of c. So that the proportional controller's transfer function is a constant, and that constant is the gain, controller gain. Sometimes we can also use another parameter to describe proportional controller. Usually we would use the controller gain. But we can also describe it as using proportional band. Where the proportional band is described as the inverse of the controller gain and write it in terms of percentage. As the simplest controller of all, uh, the proportional controller has the advantage of being simple. And because of its simplicity, it cannot handle very accurate uh, controlling of values. So it would be great if the exact value of the control value is not important. For example, if we want to prevent overflow or emptying of a tank, then we can use proportional controller as a crude estimate because we do not need the precise uh, value of the flow rate to be at the set point. And so that is the disadvantage of the proportional controller. Because of its simplicity, it cannot take account of a very complex system, so it will have offset, which is defined as the state error. And state state error can occur when we have a set point change. Remember that we have y of set point is a function of t. If it is a function of t, it's not fixed. Changes. If it changes, we will have steady state error. And we need to retune the proportional controller. Or if we have sustained disturbance that will that drives our system to a new steady state, then it will also lead to steady state errors.